The A-Crust, and in particular the Rotman Research Institute, is well known not just for its great reputation in geriatric care, but also for its neuroscience research. I've been here 15 years, and this has been an incredibly rewarding and wonderful place to work because not just of the technological resources we have here for doing all the kinds of brain imaging work we can do, but we're fortunate enough to have a group of colleagues here that are all interested in the same thing. We're all interested in frontal lobe function, memory, brain disease, and to have a group all working on these questions and also happen to be all great people to work with uh, is really, um, really unique. When we talk about the frontal lobes and executive function, we're talking about the highest level of the brain. It's kind of the, in a sense, the top of the food chain. The frontal lobes of the brain are involved in higher level processes, multitasking, strategy, decision making, social functioning, things that we think of as unique to humans things that are not basic functions such as vision or perception, but actually control basic functions or are involved in the high level control of, of, of our behavior. Because they're connected to all parts of the brain, they're very sensitive to different types of conditions. But they're also sensitive to damage in other parts of the brain that might be deep in the brain or might be towards, more towards the back of the brain because the frontal lobes themselves rely intensively on their connections. That's how they do their work. A telephone isn't much use without its connection to the network. And so you have this network and the frontal lobes are involved in processing of this network, involved in organization of activity in the brain and it can be affected by many conditions. So I've described conditions that I'm interested in, that I've done a lot of research in, head injury, stroke, tumors that affect the frontal lobes, but you also get deficits in psychiatric diseases. It has large effects on executive functions. You can get effects from fatigue, from grief, or transient changes, blood sugar levels. So basically anything that can affect the body and affect the brain can affect executive functioning. My interest in this mainly uh, comes from my experiences as a clinician. So I was trained as a, as a clinical psychologist and I got interested in brain behavior functioning and diagnosis and I was doing clinical work and I found that um, the patients that I was working with, they had these executive and frontal lobe deficits but we didn't really have any way of diagnosing them. And my job at that time was, was diagnosis and to some extent treatment. The methods for diagnosis were very ineffective for the types of executive problems that are important in life, like, again, strategy, decision-making, those sorts of things. And treatment was virtually non-existent. Even if we could diagnose, there was very little we could do for, for treatment. So I got interested in the research aspect because I found that as a clinician, um, there was a lot of work that needed to be done. I got interested in Brian Wilson as a kid because I loved the Beach Boys and, and I always listened to their music. Later in life, I actually discovered Pet Sounds, which was such a classic and important album in the history of modern contemporary music. And I knew that he had serious mental illness, so I was interested in the correspondence of his mental illness with the emergence of this revolutionary piece of work. I started to do some reading and background research, just mainly in my spare time, and made some interesting discoveries about his career and made some interesting connections about the time course of his mental illness and how it related to his artistic productivity, his decline, and in his actual kind of renaissance now as a performing artist and, and how he's able to function at a high level. It connected to my interest in the frontal lobes, which is how I put that together.